Well, good morning, uh, everybody. Uh, and Dion, thank you very much indeed for the invitation to come and uh, speak at the launch of this year's Corruption Perception Index. Corruption is, uh, remains an issue I feel um, passionate about, both professionally uh, and certainly personally. Because it remains one of the biggest global issues of our time, it is everyone's business and it is bad for business. It spreads inequality, it fuels poverty, and damages the social and eco economic development of any country. And the most vulnerable in society are often the first to feel corruption's effects. We know corruption varies in scale and in form. Uh, it can be as simple as paying a small bribe to a government official to speed up a process. Or much more complex can involve embezzlement of millions from the public purse. Whatever the case, it hurts me and it hurts you. It's also, we know, a global phenomenon affecting every country on the planet. The World Economic Forum estimates corruption costs at least 5% of global GDP, and the World Bank estimates over 1 trillion US dollars is paid in bribes each year. That's money that could have been spent on equipment outfitting hospitals, food for starving children, improving the standard of living of a nation. Instead, it benefits criminals. And those, of course, are just the direct costs. The indirect costs are just as damaging. Corruption erodes people's trust in justice. It damages the legit legitimacy of political and economic institutions. And it can also undermine democracy. When checks and balances intended to safeguard our society are undermined, our peace and security is threatened at every level. So my main obvious point is that corruption costs and it damages. It can only be tackled and reduced by working in partnership. And this has to be a step-by-step -step approach. It can't be done overnight, and it requires collective commitment and co collaborative action. So in Britain, working with international partners, we've developed a robust legislative and regulatory framework. Our 2010 Bribery Act is internationally recognized, and the 2017 Criminal Finances Act enables Britain to tackle money laundering, corruption, tax evasion, and terrorist financing. It's been described by Transparency International as the most significant anti-corruption legislation of the past 30 years. And we pursue a collaborative approach because there is so much value in learning from each other. What do I mean? So uh, in 2017, for example, with the US, we co-hosted the first Global Forum Asset Recovery Meeting. It was supported by the World Bank and UNODC. And the forum examined the, rec the, the recovery of assets stolen from Nigeria, Sri Lanka, Tunisia, and Ukraine. And it highlighted the importance of all partners and actors being involved in the approach, uh, bringing together government, civil society, media, and international organizations. In that year, we also operationalized the International Anti-Corruption Coordination Center, the IACCC, bringing together specialist law enforcement officers from agencies around the world to tackle allegations of large-scale corruption. It includes eight law enforcement agencies, but also non-participating law enforcement agencies can also refer cases of grand corruption to the center. We continue to press on with the implementation of our anti-corruption strategy, and we've had many successes to date, including taking action on corrupt elites and reducing incidents of uh, corruption at our borders. That's the bigger picture. Locally, I continue to put the weight of the British High Commission behind the issue. We have been supporting the Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative with the creation of a beneficial ownership register, the first of its kind in Trinidad and Tobago. This will be launched uh, in the coming weeks, and it provides a blueprint for national companies uh, disclosure using the extractive sector as a model. It's a really good step in the right direction. And the intention is to remove secrecy in ownership. So no longer will owners be able to hide, evade taxes, or engage in illicit financial activity, marking an end to those getaway cars for crime and corruption. This arrangement has worked well in the UK. In 2016, we were among the first uh, to create a public register of the beneficial owners of companies. And we continue to refine the model, learning from experience as we go. Leaving aside my own personal membership of the TTTI, um, I'm also pleased to direct my team's efforts to support the Institute in their fight against local corruption. Over the next three months, we'll be supporting them in the rollout of their Integrity in Schools Club program, which I think is a really excellent initiative. 
a, a proactive approach is, is so important to preventing the circumstances which allow corruption to take place in the first case. So instilling integrity in the young people of this country from an early age is among the most important things we can teach them. Integrity, truth, honesty, these can only strengthen our hands. Of course, tackling corruption also requires systems to be in place. Attitudes in society have to be aligned to the effort. There need to be well-functioning processes to investigate, prosecute, and sanction. Plugging loopholes and ensuring good management systems, the prevention agenda, is essential as is behavioural change. The launch of today's index will no doubt make us think, uh, leave us reflecting on battles already won, but also those yet to come. We have to remain committed. We must put words into action. We must all push for responsive, accountable, and transparent governments, governance systems. Because I come back to my main point. Corruption undermines the rule of law and democracy, and civil society and organisations like TTTI uh, have uh, been absolutely key to ending impunity in many countries. In a democratic society, civil society's voice is at its strongest, and it can be emboldened to both work with government and to hold them to account. They can become the watchdogs over precious state resources. So that's why my High Commission will continue to support the strengthening and implementation of key international governance and anti-corruption agreements at global and regional levels, and why we will continue to work closely with willing partners like the TTTI. We will continue to support international organisations as they undertake more proactive anti-corruption programming and promote standards and good practice to strengthen their impact. We will continue to do what we can to provide a platform for those voices in this country speaking out against corrupt practice. And we will, of course, continue to work with government we have provided support in a range of areas, including advice on how Trinidad and Tobago can have itself removed from the uh, Caribbean Financial Action Task Force's grey list. And my criminal justice team have also worked with the government on the bill to provide a regulatory framework for non-profit organisations and a procedural framework for investigating individuals and entities for listing as terrorists. This partnership must and will continue. So finally, I just say that in Britain you have a strong friend and ally determined to work together to the benefit of both our countries in tackling corruption and in protecting our precious democracy. Thank you. <laughs>